Greetings and welcome to this chapter of our beam design series. If you are looking for the entire problem, then you might want to start with the area moment of inertia video. But if you're just looking at how to do a simple shear force and bending moment diagram, then stay right here. For starters, in a beam problem like this, we're going to sketch the beam. Now one thing I'm missing are the dimensions. So we'll put those in. And here we have 150 millimeters from the left support. This one to the 600 Newton force is an additional 400 millimeters. And then the 1200 Newtons is another 400 millimeters down. And then the last support is another 150 millimeters down. So you see that there's a certain amount of symmetry, but this force and this force are not the same value. So you can't use complete symmetry here. So we'll have to do the calculations the old fashioned way using our sum of the moments. We're going to sum the moments about point A and they have to come out to be zero. And we're going to start with the 840 Newton force first. Multiply that times 150 millimeters and make sure we get the direction on that. And it looks like it's going clockwise around point A. So that means it's negative. That's what we do in mechanical engineering. The civil engineers use that as a positive. So then we're going to add the next moment, which is for the 600 Newton force. And that is 400 plus 150, 550 millimeters from point A. Always do it respect to that location and that's also clockwise and thus negative negative. and we're going to add in the next one which is 1200 newtons and we've got four four 150 gives us 950 millimeters and that's also going clockwise I'm going to add in the last support there, ZY, we don't know what it is, times the entire length of the beam, 1100 millimeters. And of course, we take the moments about point A because that would mean that the force at AY is going through directly through that point causing it to have a force multiplied by zero, giving it a zero moment, which leaves us one unknown here. And we will bust out our calculator. So 840 times 150. So zero equals 126,000. Newton millimeters. That's negative. Now some might want to translate this into something a little more manageable, but I'm going to keep it in millimeters because we'll want to do that for this whole problem, this video and the next ones. We're going to subtract 600 times 550, 330,000 Newton millimeters. We're going to subtract 1,200 times 950, and that's 1.140 million of these. So 1140000 Newton millimeters plus ZY times 1100 millimeters. 
So we can add all these up and then uh, set this equal to the other side. So I'm going to take z y times 1100 millimeters equals plus One five nine six zero 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 Newton millimeters. Sometimes the question comes, hey, what happened to the minus signs? Well, if I keep ZY times 1100 millimeters on this side of the equation, I have to add all these to both sides. So the other side of the equation makes this positive. Or I could subtract ZY times 1100 millimeters from both sides, making this negative, and this would be negative too. But then I multiply both sides by a negative 1, and they become positive. So solving for ZY, we just divide both sides by 1100 millimeters. Millimeters here cancel out, and ZY equals 1,451 newtons. Now a similar analysis will be some of the moments about Z equals zero, and you've got 840 times 950 millimeters, you've got 600 newtons times 550 millimeters, you've got 1200 newtons times 150 millimeters, then add that to AY times 1100 millimeters, and you'll get the zero, and you'll end up with AY equals 11. 89 newtons. Now we should always check, so we add up the forces in the y direction, and if you take Ay and Zy, you'll end up with 2640 newtons. Then if you add these up, you'll see you get 2640 newtons down. So these two are up, those two are down, adding up the forces to be zero, they check out. Okay, the next step for our diagrams is to start actually building the diagram. So I'm going to draw solid lines on the ends. And I'm going to draw dashed lines everywhere a force starts or stops. These are the critical points. Here we are. Now I'm going to draw horizontal axes. Or as horizontal as I can make it on this tablet thing. All right. Now I'm going to label them. Now it's shearing force and the shearing force is v we're going to put the units down newtons and this is our zero line for that then put in bending moment m and the units are going to be newton millimeters and make that the zero line okay now we can really start making our key lines here, and we're going to start with AY, because that's the first force we run into from left to right, and AY we calculated was 1189 newtons, and since it's an abrupt force, a concentrated force, we're going to make a line that goes up, and you always ask yourself, how far and to what level. And considering we're starting at zero, it's pretty easy. Going up 1189, 
newtons to what level? 1189 newtons. Then we're going to go across because there are no loads here. That means we have uh, a zero slope, which means it's flat. Okay, and then we hit a critical point. So we ask, why is it critical? Well, we, we're changing a force. So uh, next thing we do is we have 840 newtons. That's going down. So we'll go down here to 1189 minus 840. So we're going down how far? 840. To what level? 349 newtons. So then you ask, what's next? Well, nothing is going on here. So we have a zero slope. So we just go straight across. And then we run into another critical point. Why? Well, we got a, another load here, 600 newtons down. So I say 349 is where we're starting. We're going down 600 newtons to what level? And that will be 251, but it will be negative. So it's down to minus 251 newtons here. And this negative positive thing is a relative thing. If we went from right to left, which would be perfectly fine, then this would be a positive 251. So it just depends on which direction you're taking. And we're all set here. So now we continue on. What's going on up here? We have a uh, no more loads again. So we have a zero slope. He's going straight across to another critical point. What's happening here? 1200 newtons down. Okay, to what level? So negative 251 minus 1200 would make it 1451. And then nothing's happening here, so we have a flat line right there. And then we get to this point here. ZY is 1451 newtons. Oh, this should be negative 1451. So I've got negative 1451 and positive 1451 which means this goes straight up to zero, which is what's expected. And sometimes you have some round off error that you might end up with 1452 or 1450 or something like that, but we did not have any of that today. So uh, last for our shear force diagram is to label the maximum shear force. So our V max is in this case, it's the 1451 because we just care about the absolute value. So it's 1451 newtons. Okay. Now, the next step we're going to do is actually use the shear force diagram to make the bending moment diagram. So uh, just again, looking at this, this is where the maximum shearing force is here and there's high level here, but not as much in the middle. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is calculate all the areas under here. Now, if you've taken calculus, you understand the value of being able to take the areas under a curve, but luckily for us, we just have rectangles to deal with. So if I calculate the area here, I have 1189 newtons, times 150 millimeters, and that gives me 178,350 newton millimeters. The next one, I'm going to call area two, is 349 newtons times 400 millimeters yields 139 thousand six hundred newton millimeters okay so those are all the positive ones now we have to make some negative areas here and our third area is 
251 newtons negative times 400 millimeters and that gives us negative 100 thousand 400 newton millimeters and finally our fourth area is 150 millimeters times 1451 newtons on the negative and that gives us negative 217,650 Newton millimeters. Okay, so each of these areas represents a bending moment that we're going to track here on this part of the diagram. So as we go from left to right, we pick up and gather this much bending moment, and then we gather this much bending moment, and as we go down the line, it will go up because we have a lot of positive, and then we will go down because we have a bunch of negative. I'm going to do a little bit of connect the dots here. I'm just going to say, okay, from left to right here in this area, we got 178,350 going from zero to that. Okay, then I add in this 139,600, and we get up to 317,950, and then we go down 100,400. I'm going to have to put this down here to avoid our shear force diagram, and then that's going to be at 217. 550 and then I actually subtract 217,650 which brings me down to believe it or not negative 100 and remember how I was saying about some round off error well here it is but it's a fairly small amount now I'm just going to connect the dots here Okay, and that's the best I can do with this uh, tablet here to make these lines kind of straight. But each of these lines should be straight because this this right here is a positive value all the way across. It's the same value. So this will have a constant slope all the way up here, just like a line does. And then this one, likewise, is just going to be at a lower slope because this is at a lower value, the 349. And then this comes down this way because this is a negative slope, this 251. And then this is a much uh, sharper negative slope at negative 1451. So last but not least for our bending moment diagram here, we have our M max is equal to 317,950 Newton millimeters. Now again, there's some round off error. The uh, maybe more analytically accurate answer is going to end up being 318,000 flat and use that value later on in our problem. Well, I hope that this video helped you understand a little bit better how to find the moments and the reactions for a beam in simple bending. Then using that information, we created the shear force diagram. From that information, we found the areas under the curves between the sections. And from there, we found the locations for the points of the bending moment diagram. And throughout all that, we found our maximum shear force our maximum bending moment. Notice that our maximum shear force is at the ends and our maximum bending moment is in the middle. And that can have design implications further down the road. I hope this helped.